in, in life, you're either an egg, an apple, or a tennis ball. Um, if you're an egg, you're fragile, and you break easy, and it's a wrap for you. And if you're an apple, everyone comes to just eat away at you and leave you with nothing but your core. But if you find your way to be a tennis ball, no matter what happens to you, you'll always bounce back. Mm. And you will never, ever fold. You know what I'm saying? So just keep plugging along, man. It always works out. Turn it up a little louder. Put yourself, put yourself on. What does that mean? The Hustler's How To Guide to self made Success. Hey, turn this up, fam. Turn up right now. Free smoke, free smoke, hey, free smoke, free smoke. The bobbypan.com, that's cool. Thank you. Got a candle on my wrist, girl, I'm just not. All my money here with you. I don't dance now, I make money move. This is where it's at. Welcome to your hustler's how-to guide to self-made success. I'm your host, Bobby Penn, and this is another Put Yourself On podcast. Today's guest is super amazing. I met this guy in, what, 2010, and he was running the hottest lifestyle and entertainment online magazine in the Washington, D.C. area. If you were in D.C. during that time, whether college or working, I guarantee Elite D.C. took some photos for you. Everybody's Facebook page was Elite D.C., He has since moved on to become superpower, influencer, and serial entrepreneur. Um, So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and kick it off to Mr. Anwa Kong. How are you? Hey, what's up? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. You know. No doubt. I look forward to, to sharing your story. So you have a Caribbean background. Were you born in the States or... No, nah, I was actually born in Jamaica, um, and I moved here when I was like 13. Yeah, so. Wow. Yeah, so- yeah, my, 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 yeah, my early years were definitely spent on the island, just being an island kid, you know what I'm saying, walking everywhere, running around, just having a good time, you know what I'm saying, so, you know. I think that's really cool. I mean, to to relocate at age 13, I feel like by then you kind of already are who you are, if that makes sense. So what was your adjustment like? And what were some of the starch differences you noticed um, coming to America from, you know, your background in Jamaica? I mean, I think, um, I, I mean, it's kind of weird. So, like, you know, um, when I came here, that was, like, in the 90s or not. So it was, like, mid-90s when I came here. So it was, just a, it was a lot of different things. Like, that was, like, maybe, like, five years removed from, like, the whole, like, cool running thing, mm-hmm. the whole movie and whatnot. And just like, you know, just, you know, kids in middle school or wherever that was, just like, yo, can you speak Jamaican? I, that was like the thing, you know what I'm saying? So that kind of kind of made me like an introvert a little bit where I just kind of wanted to just not talk and kind of just be by myself a little bit. Because, you know, cause you're like an outsider, you know? So, um, you know, you're, you're like an outsider. You're coming from somewhere, somewhere that's completely different. Um, one of the biggest things, you know, for me was just kind of like in Jamaica I had uniforms. And then when I came here, everybody was dressed in whatever, you know what I'm saying? So, like, everybody's wearing, like, cool clothes, and I'm wearing Kmart clothes, you know what I'm saying? It's just, yeah. like, <laughs> just little things like that that made a difference um, as you were, like, growing up in that, you know, in those ages. You know what I'm saying? Kids had on, like, the Jordans and the cool shoes, and I don't even know what I had on, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I said, you're a serial entrepreneur, and I, I have personally noticed um, from going to Temple and just being in really diverse areas, I've noticed children of immigrants or um, new people, I guess, to the country, tend to be a lot more uh, ambitious. The standard is different, right? It's just a cultural thing. So that was what I was trying to set up. (laughs) I think, I mean, I definitely think, I think, I think uh, just being in this country by itself gives you a whole lot of other options than no one else has in the world, right? So, so I think, you know, when you have the opportunity to come here and come and come and live in this country, when you get here, you see the wealth of opportunities at your, at your like, fingertips. Um, and then you see the lack of opportunity from where you come from. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a different, it's like a different level of appreciation of being in this country. Like, you don't take anything for granted. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're here, and you cannot be here. You know what I'm saying? It's one of those things. So I think, I think people who are born in America, born here in America, 
even if they even if they grew up in poverty, um, they they complain a lot about like their beginning place. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. When when sometimes immigrants come here with nothing, with like thirty five dollars in their pockets, you know what I'm saying, and they gotta find a way. Um, so you know, I, I just think it's just a different mindset. We come here with the mindset to work and build our way to the top. Versus, I don't know. I mean, I think everyone is trying to work, but we don't we don't come with excuses. We come here with the with the the the, the world is against us, so we gotta make a way. You know what I mean? It's like the it's like the small dog in a fight, if you will. Mm -hmm, definitely. So, um, tell me about, I guess, your college experience. I know you went to Morgan State. Uh, we just had DJ Heat on last week. <laughs> so, I'm showing Matt love to yeah. Morgan right now. Um, how did that shape who you are now? Um, yo, like, Morgan was a great experience for me. Um, like, I, I went there. I got involved on campus early. Um, started doing campus radio. And like became like the program, not the program, but the promotions manager of the, of the campus radio station, like my first semester there. And it just kind of helped me find, it helped me find what I wanted to do and who I was, you know what I mean? Like, and then early on, I just realized like I had a gift of getting people to do something or try something. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and like that, I've kind of finagled that into what I'm, what I'm doing now as a career, you know what I'm saying? Which is like, brand marketing and getting people just to at least try something or starting a wave. I've always just been good at starting a wave and, and Morgan helped me realize that I was just good at starting a wave. You know what I'm saying? And kind of just like, you know, being voted like homecoming king my senior year and like being the king of the school and, you know, just that whole experience, you know, that whole experience and then kind of networking with other home um, HBCU kings and queens. Um, you know, across the country and, like, going to pageants and being a part of pageants and that type of stuff. So, you know, but it, it also taught me that, like, um, a lot of, like, young black kids weren't willing to work hard, right? Mm -hmm. And they were, like, they they were rather, they rather be a part of the cool crowd than actually try to separate themselves, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it kind of really just showed me that if I was willing to work a little bit harder than everybody else, that I could be a leader amongst this group and not be caught up in a pact, if you will. What college is for, you know what I'm saying? College is kind of there to kind of help you discover, what, are you going to be a part of the pack or are you going to be leading the pack? You know what I'm saying? So I kind of, I discovered that I was, I think I was able to lead the pack. Nice. So when did the entrepreneurial bug hit you? You know, it's kind of always been my thing. Like, um, both my grandfathers were entrepreneurs. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like serial entrepreneurs. Like, my whole life, both my grandfathers were. It was just kind of like my the fam, my family on my on my dad's side. They're like they're like Asian. They're like Chinese, Chinese Jamaican. They like they're entrepreneurs. Like, they all none of them work. They all have companies. You know what I'm saying? So, I just feel like it's just always been a part of who I am, and um. I think when I was in college, like I, I stopped, I took my refund check and I paid this company in India, um, like five hundred dollars to make a website. I mean, the website was called BaltimoreCollegeParty.com, and basically the website just told people where all the parties were in Baltimore, and we used to go to the parties and take pictures and post them on our website, and that's that kind of started that way. And then I remember like the first time I got like a five hundred dollar advertisement check from some company. Um, for that website, it, and like I was in college, I'm like, damn, I got five hundred dollars for just for just for promoting this on this website. Like, come on, like there, there's a there's, there's there's more opportunities here. So you know what I mean? So that's really what it was. So basically, in college, it kind of showed me the way that I could that I could do it. That was really smart. Outsourcing is something that. Um... I know this probably sounds silly to you, but it's something I just kind of consider with like my creative consulting company. I had started taking on clients and I began to feel a little overwhelmed. And I talked to one of my girlfriends and I'm like, I just, I can't do all of this by myself. And she's like, you don't have to try, right? Like you hire other people to help you. So I'm, I applaud you for even thinking to hire the company in India to build the website for you rather than, like you said before, make excuses as to why you can't launch your idea, right? Because I don't have the skill set or I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to do it. Find somebody who does. <laughs> so I definitely applaud you. And I, I didn't even know that story. So that definitely 
make sense um, to us move flash forward into Elite DC. Um, like I said, you were the go-to at that point. Like nobody was cool if they didn't have a Facebook profile picture with the Elite DC E on it. So tell me how you built that brand. Um, yo, like the whole Elite DC thing was. It was <laughs> Honestly, man, it was it was an idea. I was always fascinated with the name Elite, uh, with the with just the word Elite. I've all I was always fascinated with it. And um, when I when I started to the thing, so it, I guess it kind of started back in like 2006 when I moved back to DC from Baltimore. I just started going out to events and taking pictures. And at that time, like I had like a little print magazine I was doing, and I was just like, "Yo, print is a." Print is whack. So I went back to the online thing and I just I built out a website and I just remember the first first people that paid me was just like somebody paid me fifty dollars and I was like, damn, like they actually pay me to come and take actually come in to pay me to take pictures at these parties. And then the next person paid me and then like everybody started paying me. Everybody was like, yo, and while I was everywhere. And then like I knew like people are into like the new thing, right? And at that point Camera phones weren't popping. So you, like, the only pictures you were getting from the club was, like, if I was there or if another photographer was there. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I kind of just branded that E to make it cool. So what I did was I just kept changing the, the logo. Like, every, every month I would change it based on the season. Like, if there was, like, mm -hmm. Black History, I would create, like, a Black History logo. If there was, like, Fall, I would create, like, a Fall logo. Like, logo like I just kept like rotating the, the logo so every time I would change the logo people would be like nah 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 like if you have the old logo that means you, you now <laughs> so you need the new logo so you know what I'm saying it was like one of just one of those things like you know what I'm saying people wanted the new logo um could I just mean they were like on the scene but then also it's kind of just like me just being selective um because I didn't take photos or post photos of everyone you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, if you did get a photo, like, you know what I'm saying, you were, like, either really cool or really hot or, like, whatever it was, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's just one of those things that everybody couldn't get a photo. Like, you had to you had to figure out who was going to be, like, the, the 50 people that night that was going to get a photo, and then everybody else was kind of like, damn, I don't get a photo. I guess my outfit wasn't dope enough, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. How did that ever work so like for a, you in the streets, though? Did people ever run up on you, like... Oh, you played me. <laughs> I mean, like, dudes would be like, damn, I can't get a photo, dog. I can't get a photo. Dudes would say that. And, of course, girls would be like, yo, you only take pictures of brown, of light-skinned girls. And I was just like, nah, I take pictures of everyone. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it just all depends. If you're, a pop, if you're a dude, if you're popping bottles, you would get a photo. If you just weren't popping bottles, like, okay, you probably won't get a photo. Like, you got to you gotta be here for a reason. Um, and then, you know what I mean? Nobody ever ran up on me like that, you know what I'm saying? Look, pe people would, like, shoot shots at me on online and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? But other than that, not really. All right, got you. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> yeah, so how did you, I don't even want to say make the shift because you still have um, a new website and mobile app, right? Like, oh, what are you working on right now? You got a bunch going on, so let me let you tell your own story. What are you working on uh -oh. right now? I mean, I had a I had a lot going on, so I, I basically had like DC Weekly, I had Culture Feed, like I had DC, I, I had like a ton, I had a stuff going, ton of stuff going on. Um, but like, I, I once I took on this Martell, when I, once I took on this new Martell job, um, I was starting to spread myself a little bit too thin. Um, so I kind of just made it, the, the decision to fall back from my own personal endeavors for like a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, just to kind of make sure that like this brand wins and this is something that could, that could lead to other things. Right. So, um, you know, I, I made a decision, like, let me just take a step back from everything else that I was doing and then focus on this Martell brand. Um, so currently at the moment, I'm the only other thing I do outside of Martell is this, is this um, Caribbean app called Soka Buzz. Um, and that, that basically gets like a ton of, ton of users every day. But other than that, um, that's the only two things is just March on that. Um, but as we go into March, um, all my other brands are going to start popping back up for the spring and summer. Um, cause it's kind of when people are active, definitely like my DC nights app is about to come back. Just, just all the brands that I, that I've had are, are about to be about to come back full steam. Um, now that I kind of got things under my belt a little bit better with, with the whole Martel thing. So, 
Okay, nice, yeah. which is perfect because that was really what I was trying to lead up to. So you are an influencer and a brand marketer, as you said. So I know in the past you've worked with Crown Royal. I've seen you work with Reebok. How do you even go about developing those types of relationships, right? Because it can't be just about followers. I mean, it's never about followers. Um, what I always tell people, man, like, um, <laughs> people, everyone, people are always watching you, and you don't know who's watching you and, and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Um, and then it's, it's about relationships. Like, the whole, like, first with Crown Royal, like, um, I was kind of like the photographer for Ciroc. I was kind of like the official photographer for Ciroc for like three years. I was just traveling with them like anywhere Diddy was. Like I was just kind of there, um, be capturing all the events. Um, <clears throat> and, I, you know, then that kind of led to me helping like with the local Ciroc team. And I just started taking a lot of Ciroc pictures. Um, and then like the man, then Crown Royal decided they wanted to do like a nightlife ambassador program. Um, and then they were looking for somebody and one of the guys they had originally like found at, had to fall out. So they were just like, yo, 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 who we going to pick? And they're like last minute, so they just called me and was just like, "Yo, we got this thing we want to do. Do you want to do it?" Um, but then, like the guy who made the decision, like maybe like two weeks before, he had hired me to do some photos for like an event he was doing, um, and I was just mad professional. Um, and then he just remembered, like, "Damn, Anwar, like he's everywhere in DC taking photos. Like it'd be cool to have a photographer and an ambassador." Cause he's how he knows everybody. So he could literally be out taking pictures and buying drinks at the same time. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it kind of came, it kind of came. It was, it was crazy. So they recommended me and that, that was like history. And then I did that for like two years. And then I started working on Ciroc and like Deleon, like a bunch of other Diageo brands for a year. And then like, um, the position, they actually created a position for me. And then Diageo had, like, this big old, like, thing where they wanted to, like, expand into, like, every market in America. So they brought me on to do that. And, um, and then, like, through that, the whole, through that, the whole um, Reebok thing came. A lady that was working with Ciroc in 1999 remembered me and said, and just hit me up and was like, yo, Reebok is looking for an ambassador in D.C. I put your name down for an interview at 12 o'clock tomorrow. Just go. Whoa. And I was like, what? And, I, <laughs> and it was just so crazy. But I just, I was like, well, fuck it. Like, what do I got to lose? So I went to the interview, and I was the only person they interviewed who actually wore Reeboks to the interview. <laughs> and, and, basically, and, basically, <laughs> and basically, that was what got me that, that Reebok gig. Like, they interviewed, yo, they interviewed the people they interviewed. I was like, damn, they interviewed, like, Every popping socialite in D.C. you could think of, like, anybody you think that's popping in D.C., like, you could go down the list, like, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and nobody wore Reeboks to the interview. Everybody wore something, Nikes, Adidas, whatever they wore. Um, and that, that just kind of pushed me over the edge. So it's about relationships and, and, who, and, and like, just, just being good to people. And just people always remember you, you know what I'm saying, based on the work that you've done before. Eddie Light put me on with Pepsi like a year later. So like last year I did Pepsi for like three months and that was cool. That was like dope too. So. I didn't even know that one, but definitely the, the relationships thing is what I was about to bring up. I definitely heard relationships and then attention to detail, right? Like that little attention to detail was the feather in your cap, the thing that pushed you over the edge, which sounds so ridiculous to me. Why would you not think to do that? Unless you just don't own Reeboks, I guess, but like, I don't know, not my business. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so martel has been flying you all around the world tell me more about that experience and what is martel i i feel like it just popped up recently has this been around for a while um yo like um the truth is martel is martel is the oldest of, of the cognac houses 1715 martel was founded over 300 years ago so it's been around it's been around a long time um the number one it's a, it is the number one cognac in Asia um and you know like we really have probably the best cognac around like the the the, the liquid in a bottle is, is is really incredible um you know so you know uh we're just you know we're we're trying to re-expose ourselves to cognac lovers um in the states right now 
So, you know, if you're a cognac lover, we, we're just trying to expose you to to what, you know, to, to what Martell is and, and, and what the Martell lifestyle is. And it's about legacy and it's about um, sophistication and luxury and it's it's a, it's an inclusive um, thing, you know what I'm saying? It's not about you or I, but it's a, it's a movement about us and we are the swift ones and we're moving forward together, you know what I mean? Um, you know, that's our, that's just our thing. Like I can't, I can't be successful by myself, but if we, but if we come together as a team, we could be successful together. Um, you know what I'm saying? So that's the Martell way. Nice. I remember, um, when I moved to St. Louis last March, I think I, um, went to the first, I think it was called a Martell home event. And like, be curious yeah. all over the walls in the bathroom. They had like French translations of really cool words. Like, I think "turn up" was one of the words they translated in French. So, the overall experience was really cool, and I'm a fan of the brand from that experience. So, I definitely intend to um, patronize a lot more, especially knowing more of the history. You know, I like cognac and brown liquor or whatnot. So, yeah, it's good. It's smooth. <laughs> so. Yeah. So what's next? I mean, you. I know you said you are about to relaunch all your brands, but you always move, and I know you got something up your sleeve. Any like, what's next? Um, I don't. I don't even. Right now, I'm just kind of just focused on what I got going on and trying to get back into my own space a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Not, but like focus on Martell, but also focus on like my own brands and kind of like keep my own thing going. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um. Like right now, I'm on this like whole fitness thing. So like, I'm a, I'm probably this is probably like a lane for me a little bit. So, um, I mean, I I, I haven't quite wrapped my mind around what what the Anwa Fitness brand is quite yet. But um, it's something I'm thinking about. You know what I'm saying? So don't be surprised if like summertime there's like a fitness brand by me somewhere. You know what I'm saying? So it all depends on what my what my transition transition looks like and how well I could sell that. You know what I mean? Indeed. In fact, that just gave me another question. It seems like you're really good at identifying opportunities to monetize the things you are naturally interested in. What's the key to that? Or do you have any advice of, to help somebody kind of figure out how to take their natural interest and monetize it? I mean, I just think um, it's kind of like it's kind of like if you're gonna play the stock market, you should never invest in anything that you wouldn't do when you wouldn't do yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So. So it's like, um, in case in point, it's like I never used I never used Snapchat. However, when Snapchat came out, I bought like a bunch of Snapchat Snapchat stock, right? And of course, I lost my shirt on it because I didn't use it. Nobody else was using it like that. You know what I'm saying? So those are the lessons. So like, you try to find what your passions are, and and, and like the goal is to, the goal is to find a passion of yours that you could turn and monetize. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so like my thing, photography wasn't necessarily my passion, but it was a vehicle. It was a vehicle that ended up turning into something that I really enjoyed, like getting that, getting that one photo that like a big national blog wanted to post or like TMZ wanted to buy or some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, so you got to find, you got to find those things, what drives you and then try to use that. As a as a as a tool to, to to get money or monetize it, um, so you know, just look at your passions, man, and 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 then see what see see what your passions could could do for you, and and see if your passion actually solves a problem. That's that that's the biggest thing. Can your passion solve a problem? You know what I'm saying? So nice. So I gotta ask the. Number one question: What advice? One pain point that you've overcome obstacle you face time and time again something you've noticed in other entrepreneurs what advice do you have for the modern hustler um my number one thing to everybody man is like sometimes the opportunities that you miss out on are actually blessings in disguise you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. um I, I can't say what brands but like i interviewed to be brand reps for multiple brands and first interview, it was just like, basically tell me you're not good enough. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I've been able to prove those brands wrong. You know what I'm saying? Um, but those opportunities turn around and led to me getting other opportunities. You know what I'm saying? Like other opportunities 
um, with brands that kind of that fit that kind of fit my profile more than other brands. So, um, so yeah, so 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 for me, that's like the thing, man. Like every opportunity, sometimes the opportunities that you miss are the ones that you are meant to miss, and you got to move on and be stronger from those things. You know, what I'm saying? use those as motivation. Yeah, what's for you is going um, to so be I was saying, what's for you is going to be say? for you. Yeah, what's for you is for you, man, and you, you know, and what's not for you won't be for you. You know what I'm saying? So that's my number one thing, man. Don't never give up. Keep just keep plugging along. Um, the right opportunities, the right things will come. Will definitely hit your plate. You know what I mean? And your number, like my homeboy always says to me, like your number is going to get called. Your number is going to get called. Like your number is going to play. You just you just got to keep you got to keep playing your numbers. It's going to play. You know what I'm saying? It's going to hit. It's definitely going to hit. It's just, you just got to be patient and uh, passionate and um, and driven enough not to give up or, or let let the negative things allow you to fold. You know what I'm saying? I love it. Anwa Kong, everybody. Where can people keep up with you online? Definitely hit me on all socials. It's like the, the same thing, Anwa Kong, A-N-W-A-A. Um, K O N G on all social media networks everywhere across every every on all platforms. So that's really where I'm at. That's how you keep up. And you know what I'm saying? Look out for what I got next. I don't know what it is, but it's gonna be something like dope. So there you have it. How to be a brand marketer right here on the Put Yourself On podcast. I'm Bobby Penn, and I'm here every Tuesday dropping gems and showing you how to turn your passion into a profession. So make sure you tell a friend to tell a friend so they can tell their friend and we can all be friends, feel me, and go ahead and get this money. Log on every week to thebobbypin.com backslash podcast or you can subscribe to us on SoundCloud at SoundCloud backslash put yourself on podcast. We're also available in the iTunes store. So look under podcast and Google Play and all that sweet jazz. This is a Radio 1 original. So you can also find us no matter what city you're in. I guarantee you your local radio station is going to have to put yourself on podcast there too. So log on every week, show some love and get these gems, baby. The dream is free. The hustle sold separately.